Hey there, let's do some .NET performance debugging using Perfview. A long time ago, I made a video on how to use Perfview to debug .NET Core memory. This time, let's use Perfview again, but I will debug a regular .NET Framework application. You can download Perfview from this website over here. I will put a link in the description below on where to download Perfview. Just get the latest version because some of the older versions of Perfview do have problems on Windows 10 or Windows 11 when you use the latest version of .NET Framework. So definitely get the latest version of Perfview from this website. Generally, when memory is leaked, we can use tools to find it. However, in .NET, the chances that a memory leak is actually a memory leak is pretty low. What's happening in .NET is that objects are being referenced by another object in the garbage collector. So the garbage collector does not want to remove these objects. Even though we may say it's a memory leak, it's more likely just a memory hog because the objects are remaining alive after the point we think that the object should have died. This is where Perfview comes in. We can use Perfview to actually analyze the heap and find all these objects which are alive and use the knowledge of how the objects are being kept alive to deduce which objects are being a memory hog. Let me switch to an instance of Perfview and show the application that I will use for testing. So on screen, I have an application over here with a button called Waste Some Memory. This application, I wrote specifically just to hog memory and create objects in memory. There is a title bar to this application on the top here, but my capture software is not able to capture the full window properly. However, it is just a regular .NET application that I wrote with a big button to just waste memory. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to capture a base heap snapshot. So what I do is I go to memory, I go to take heap snapshot and I get a dialog for the heap snapshot. Let me just adjust my capture software so that you can clearly see what this dialog is. So this dialog over here has the list of all the processors and this is what we will use to capture the base heap. So within the dialog, let's just search for my application. It's just called Windows Forms App 1. I'm just going to call the the output data here. I'm going to call it base. Uh, just give it any name you want. I'm just calling it base because it will be easy to find. Then click dump GC heap. Now this may take a while depending on how fast your computer is. What will happen is a heap will be captured and it'll be written to your hard disk and it will appear in Perfview. Let's go ahead and close the dialog. So just close it over here. And we can see that there is a base GC heap that has appeared in Perfview. If the heap does not appear in Perfview, just check whether the folder is being set correctly. Uh, it just write it to your hard disk if it has permissions. If it does not have permission to write, an error box will appear or it will just say in the bottom that it was unable to write the heap. Uh, in my case, I'm just using a folder that all the permissions have been set so the heap can be written just about anywhere. Now that we have done that, let's take another heap, but this time after wasting some memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this waste some memory button. I'm going to click it five times. One, two, three, four, five and this would have wasted some memory. Okay, let's take another dump, but this time I'm gonna call it after. Let me just adjust my capture software so that we can see the dialog. There we are. So this time I'm just gonna go to window forms app one, and I'm gonna call this um, after dump GC heap and it's ready to go. Let me just clear off the main application. There we are. Okay, so let's analyze the two heaps and use Perfview to get a delta of the two heaps. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the heap stack of the base dump. So if I double click on heap stacks over here, I'll get another dialog. Let me just adjust my capture software yet again to show that dialog. The dialog that I get, the heap stacks dialog, let me just make it a slightly big, bigger view so that's easier to see. 
So this dialog over here is a description of the heap where all the objects are unrolled and they are actually grouped up. So let's go through all the columns first before we delta the base with the after to find the actual memory hogs. So what we get in the columns over here, let me just make this even larger because the there's quite a number of columns. So what we get in the columns over here is we get a description of all the data about the objects that were found in the heap. So it is pretty complicated to, to read these columns. So let me give it a go and try to explain what each of these columns actually mean. Okay, let's start with the first three columns, which have the EXE. This is the exclusive cost. The exclusive cost is the cost of just that object type in the garbage collector. What exactly is cost? Cost is related to the size of the object. Now, it does not exactly use that metric in Perview. It actually measures the microsecond that the CPU took to execute functions onto that object for the garbage collector. It's very complicated to explain what is it. But for this view, let's just assume that it is size because it makes the most sense. The larger the objects are, the larger the cost. Now, the EXC has a percentage, uh, a column without a percentage and a column with a CT. The percentage is just the proportion of the garbage collector that has this particular type. The exact number is in the EXE and the CT is the count, the number of objects that exist. We will look more at the CT, which is the number of objects that exist, because the other column is actually the size. So. In this view over here, we have a lot of objects here, but as we go further, we will actually filter it to just the objects that were hogging memory, and then this will become much more clearer. I will explain in a future video what exactly is cost. Uh, there is a metric for it. Um, I did not want to explain it at this point because it will be too confusing how a size of an object is related to cost. So let's just assume this is the size since we are doing memory debugging. When we do performance debugging, costs will become very apparent. The next three columns we have is the inclusive cost. We have the percentage, the actual cost, and the count. The inclusive cost is actually the cost of the object and all the children contained within the object. So for example, if a parent object has a cost of X and a child has a cost of Y, the inclusive cost will be X and Y. It is just showing that some objects contain other objects. Finally, we have the fold and the fold counter. This fold and fold counter are not actually statistics within the um, heap itself, but rather when we use these filters over here on the top here, uh, this will create the fold. Um, we can use very complicated syntax over here to fold the expression so that we can list objects in groups. I will not be using the fold count um, at this moment because this um, folding uh, algorithm over here is very, very complicated to explain. So I'll just stick to using the exclusive and the inclusive counts. Okay, so let's compare the base with the after so that we can filter and get the objects that are hogging memory. So what I do is I minimize the screen so that I can go back to uh, purview. I want to select under after, I want to select heap stacks. So if I double click heap stacks, what I'm going to get is, let me just adjust the capture software. I am going to get another view, which is of the after. So let me just stretch it a bit. I can see that it is the same objects, but the counts will be different. This is how per view works. If you open two of these windows side by side, you'll be able to see the difference but we can use Perfview to generate the difference in a third view. So what we do is, when we have two windows open, two views open, if we take the after and we go up here to regression, and then we select with baseline, what we will get is we will get an overweight report. Let me just show what that report looks like. So the overweight report over here, let me just uh, move away the other view. There we are. This is the overweight report. The overweight report is a list of all the objects that may have leaked or they may have hogged 
memory in this application. Now, because Perfview keeps opening all these different windows, my capture software is having a really tough time to capture all the different windows. But on your computer, you should have a lot of windows open because Perfview does not dock things very well. So if you have the overweight report over here, what it's showing is that it's showing just the top number of objects that are just large, like they've grown. So I can see that in this list, the largest object to have grown is an object called Wasteful Object. So Windows Form App 1, that's, that's my application, and the namespace is uh, Wasteful Object. So Wasteful Object has grown so much that in the overweight category, it is the largest object to have grown. Similarly, there is a small object that has grown slightly smaller, but the largest growth of memory 94% was by this one particular object type. So that's already a clue, but let's analyze deeper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my report over here and I'm going to choose something a bit different. So this time in the after dump, I'm going to choose div and I'm going to choose with baseline. So what's going to happen is it's going to open another dialog. Let me just show you that dialog. And this window over here, the combination of both is the delta between the base and the after. Okay, so adjusted the screen. So what we have here is a list of objects that were reported as the largest objects and they have been sorted by the exclusive count and the inclusive count. From the list here, we can see that wasteful object over here was the largest object to be found in the delta. There are 50 instances and the cost is 1000. We can also see that inner wasteful object is also 50, but the inclusive count of wasteful object is 100. This kind of tells us that there's some kind of relationship between the objects and we will use Perfview to find out what that relationship is. The easiest way to do that is to click on the flame graph over here. So what the flame graph does is that it draws the top objects and it actually lists them by the order in which they are nested. We can see that inner wasteful object over here is actually nested within wasteful object. That is why wasteful object has got 50 instances and inner wasteful object has got 50 instances but the inclusive count is 100 because it's adding both together. So if I go back here, I can actually see that relationship being shown uh, within these numbers over here. And we can see that small object is probably not related because if I go back to this list, small object is actually listed uh, over here, this yellow part over here, this is actually small object. It is so tiny that it's not even relevant uh, for this memory hog if we were looking for the largest object. We can verify that by going to wasteful object and double clicking on it that will switch to the referred from and we can see that wasteful object is owned by form 1. Now if I do the same for inner wasteful object, I'll find that inner wasteful object is actually owned by wasteful object. So I can actually see the relationship. If I'm debugging memory to try to find what's causing the big memory hogs, well, knowing the relationship of the objects is handy because then I can know which object here is the one that actually created the leak. I can also see that wasteful object is actually held by a list and is held by form 1. So I can go into form 1 and actually debug what's happening to this list that is holding on to all these objects. Because my application is a test application dedicated to show this, well I know exactly why because I wrote it to be that way. But in a general application, this is a really handy thing to see, this relationship. Now all this may seem a bit complicated, so let's just switch to a bit of source code. So what we have over here is that if I go to form 1, I can actually see that uh, what's happening is that when I click on the button over here, all it's doing is just adding a lot of objects to this list. And if I go to wasteful object over here, I can see that all it's doing is having an instance of inner wasteful object and inner wasteful object is just, well, wasting memory. So it's actually a pretty cool relationship that uh, Perfview is able to find out. I think I will just leave it there. Perfview is very complicated to use and there's a lot of filtering options. I will make a video in the future dedicated to just the filtering options and the folding options so that that video will have a lot of time to explore all the different ways on how you can fold the screen. 
I think the way I just used it where I just did a diff between two heaps should suffice in finding the largest objects that are causing a hog of memory in the .NET application. The technique that I used can be used for .NET Core. However, in .NET Core, sometimes you might want to run .NET Core tools to just capture the heap and then copy it to Perfview. In my previous video, that's exactly what I did. Um, you can actually just use Perfview to capture the GC heap if you are able to get access to the .NET Core application. Generally, I don't do that because .NET Core applications run in containers or they run in remote servers. But if you have the opportunity to do that, you can use Perfview to capture the GC heap of a .NET Core application. Anyway, this video is long enough. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever used Perfview this way and let me know your thoughts on how to capture the GC heap and how to do a diff or a folding if you know any advanced ways of using Perfview. I will make more videos about Perfview, especially system level Perfview, which I totally skipped for this video. That's a bit more advanced. So definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those videos. Hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.